Hey y'all, welcome to Geek Freaks. I am Frank, and today I'm joined by Jalen. Hey, hey y'all. We got Squeaks. Squeaks. Oh, that was sexier than expected. No, no. Oh, no. Dude, oh, why, how do you say it? The Asmers like thing? What did they do? Yeah, I don't know. I was like, just, I was like, that's a weird name for it. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great one. Oh, we got Thomas on this one too. What's going on, everybody? We have a lot to talk about today, uh, but we're going to be focusing on the big stuff here. We've got the Loki season two, the Marvels. We're going to talk about Invincible a little bit, um, but we're going to be first going with a geek box question. Oh, Which do you prefer, Transformers or Voltron? Charles, let's go with you. What do you think? I have to say Transformers, I guess. Neither, but <laughs> I like the, the earlier Transformers movies. I barely yeah. watched the, I don't think I really watched the shows at all, so I'm not the best person to weigh in on this, honestly. Yeah, Squeaks, I think you might know Voltron pretty well. What do you think? Uh, uh, yeah, but I'm still gonna go Transformers. Uh, okay. Nothing gets me more excited than uh, Decepticons and uh, uh, Autobots fighting for Cybertron, right? And then even at that, they've been uh, it's a newer series, right? From Netflix has been actually pretty good too. These are little animated oh, really? series. I kind of enjoy them myself. So I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go. Play, I mean, honestly, too, the Transformers video games, not the ones that are fully movie based, are uh, really well done too and extremely hard to find. So um, yeah, Transformers all the way. I'm going to give Time. a shout out to Voltron real quick because the Voltron Netflix series is quite good. Oh, you okay. had a chance to watch that, the animated one? No. Uh, the old ones, I could have watched it. I don't really remember, but the new Netflix ones, I think, is some really top notch stuff. Mm. Really cool characters and everything like that. So I like that a lot. Okay. Thomas, what do you think, man? I'm kind of laughing to myself because I was going to say the opposite. <laughs> like, mm. I tried to watch the new <laughs> Netflix one. I was like, I could not get into it. Um, really? But okay. I, I mean, growing up, I liked it when it was more of an anime. I was like super about that. But yeah, I think I side with everybody. You can't be Transformers. Like it's, yeah. it's too dope. The cartoon was too good. They intersected <laughs> with G.I. Joe's. Like the, yeah. the original Transformers movies were awesome. Even this latest one in the series. What was it? Oh, I forgot what the name was. Dark Planet or something oh, know, beast, yeah. beast wars yeah. oh yeah that's right yeah <clears throat> yeah beast wars was actually pretty Probably good was. it surprised me how much i liked that movie so yeah yeah transformers all day i will say i was kind of the pity vote for voltron it was done by the same studio that made animation studio that made legend of Korra. so that's like why i really give it a shot so mm. that that's kind of backing me up on that one too <laughs> all right so we're gonna get into the news we're gonna get through some quick ones here uh sag after strike is over so Production is in full swing now in Hollywood. Um, Marvel announced a few changes to the schedule. Generally the same. Uh, next big thing is Deadpool's coming in July. Jonathan has already promised me. I made him promise me, essentially. He's coming over to my house. And we're watching Deadpool 1 and 2. He's going to give it a second shot. Right, Jonathan? Another one was like right. a black uh, bag over the head, thrown in the back of a car yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Just exactly. like this gone. Then you get yeah. out of that car in some <laughs> random way, your pants are down. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> there. <laughs> I've seen Deadpool 1 and 2. <laughs> Tricks on you. I didn't have pants on in the first place. Oh, no! yeah. <laughs> I know when to pick them up. Right. Uh, uh, no, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, I'll watch them. I, I, the break in the fourth wall thing has always been a major, yeah. like, turnoff to me for um, whatever you call these movies. <laughs> Deadpool. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't yeah. I'm sure you love She-Hulk then, right? so excited about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, oh man. God. Like, I don't I know why the, the, the fourth wall thing just kind of ruins it for me, but I'll give it a shot anyways, because especially now that I know it's going to, you know, be so relevant and tie in, you know, with all the the uh, X-Men stuff. So, yeah. Got to give it a I shot. I think Mobius is going to be in it too, is what it sounds like. Maybe because, yeah. you know, leaks and rumors and stuff like that, but it sounds like Mobius from TVA will be there. Yeah. yeah. Be cool. the, the guy from Succession, Tom, they think he's going to be a TVA agent too, so. Yeah. That's cool. If you like succession, that dude's in it. He gets real strong, like low level TVA vibes. So that makes sense to me. <laughs> like X5 <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah some <laughs> random dude. Um, <laughs> so that's good. The strike is over. Uh, moving over to Anola Anno- Holmes 3 is in the works. Uh, I forgot no- Anola Holmes 2 yeah, came right. out. I know that Daniel's like a major fan of the series. Um, so I'm oh. excited to see that. Have we you guys? Know <laughs> yeah. Well, I know you guys have seen the first one. Have you guys seen the second one yet? I haven't seen the second one. The first one was really good. I really liked it yeah. too. And I just, I don't, maybe I didn't realize when the second one came out, but yeah, Same. I should definitely watch it. I think we talked about it on the show, but I don't think we actually reviewed it or anything like that. Either of you guys? No, um, you know, wrong, sir. I've never seen the first one. <laughs> I tried. Oh, that's too bad. I was like, man, Henry Cavill, Superman's in this. I, I couldn't. It's it's not for me. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, 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 what do you mean? What what 
What's wrong with the Henry Cavill? Right. No, no, Henry Cavill is great. I mean, oh, like, okay, okay, just okay. that movie, it was okay, not okay, for me. Okay. Yeah, That's why yeah, I gave no, him a shot, Superman is definitely okay. for me. Just yeah, yeah. Him, okay, okay. Him in that world and, like, it being about her and not being Sherlock. And she's a great actress, but it's just like, ah, I was so bored of that movie. I'm just going to be honest. It just didn't work yeah. for me. I like the whole concept, too, that it's like you can explore the Sherlock Holmes world through a different person now and kind of broaden it. Because we've seen Sherlock Holmes done a million different ways and you know it's it's always more or less the same story but now to follow her it kind of just opens up to you know you can explore the world a little more and hopefully they add more characters as they go on with the movies yeah, that's a great point I would like i would like a nola holmes that character in the robert Downey jr sherlock's home well, holmes mm-hmm. world like i think mm-hmm. that's a really cool world to explore a little bit grittier a little bit funner for being honest and I know Enola is not really necessarily part of the original canon, but what the hell, make it make it that way. Change the name if you want to. And let's see how he does as a dad all of a sudden. It would be really neat, you know. Hey, we'll get a I love you 3000 in there. So let that make us all happy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chronicles of Narnia is getting rebooted by Greta oh, Gerwig. That she's the director for it. They're going to be starting filming in 2024. Did we need a reboot for this? Squeaks, take it away. Uh, I don't know. <sighs> I'm gonna say, okay, so did we need one? No, because I think the movies are still really well, and I can watch them anytime. But what it is, is I believe that Disney, what, sold pretty much, uh, or Netflix bought the series, is my understanding. Um, so, like, with that being maybe a downfall, <laughs> Disney thought that nobody, like, Chronicles and Arnia is, are over now. Okay, yeah. hey, release it. Um, I'm kind of excited for uh, Greta. Uh, doing this she's uh i know for sure directed three movies mm-hmm. oh man i'm, I'm forgetting barbie yeah barbie was uh for sure then i think it was uh oh my goodness i'm blanking out was but it they're ladybird? all bird uh, it was, was some like, lady yeah. Like yeah 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 oh, yeah uh, the Sacramento little, that's I know right about that movie. <laughs> lady bird yeah. and uh little women and if that's you look it. at those reviews that they're really high praise so for me she's well recent three movies right barbie and those two mm-hmm. Three out of three. So I'm thinking this is going to be some great stuff, hopefully. I, I want Netflix to commit to the entire series. I don't want to get to a Caspian and be done with it. Hey, look, if you mm-hmm. have to condense it all, I get that. Like, don't do the Hobbit thing and stretch it. If you want to condense it, I'm fine with that. But let's get the whole story out there. I think that would be very interesting to see somebody trying to tackle that. Uh, she I did sign it. for the first two um, out of three, is what I'm hearing. So Oh, they're going to only do three? Okay. Yeah, so uh, who knows? I mean, I don't, I mean, who knows? Like, later in the you know, maybe they'll do a fourth or five, but from what I've looked up, um, two out of three that she signed up for. Man, yeah. from the movies I've seen this year, like Barbie might be in the top three. So out of mm-hmm. all the movies, so mm-hmm. I'm super on board. She can handle a big budget. So you do that with like yeah. dope special effects and stuff. It might be really sick. Uh, and, and her humor, like it works for me. So if they're going to add in some of those jokes, man, that could be really good. I mean, I'm excited yeah. about this one too. So normally at the end of the year, we do, you know, the, the geeky awards and we hand out like best stuff. This year's going to be very, very difficult. So we're definitely going to be doing polls on all our social media. Make sure you guys follow us everywhere. Links in the description. And uh, because we're going to need your guys' vote along with our votes on best of things. Because like video games specifically is going to be very hard. I want to automatically shoot Spider-Man 2 to the top. But, you know, I know there's people who might not agree with that. And I think you're crazy. <laughs> uh, before we move on to the, to, I want to talk about Spider-Man 2 a little bit more. Jonathan, what are your thoughts on Chronicles of Narnia? Um, I'm hopeful. I mean, I, I thought the original ones were pretty good. I'm, I like how we're seeing a lot with, like, mainly the way Disney's doing things. I think a lot of our, a lot of other companies are going to try to kind of follow along where you make some movies. If they're really good, then you can make spinoff series from them or another story in, in a smaller movie with uh, like a spinoff from it. So I'm hoping mm-hmm. we could see that from this. If it's a you know smash hit and the three movies are really good, then there could be some kind of spinoffs in the same world, kind of carry on the a, a, a new like story that, that we haven't heard already. Yeah. And Marvel's but, and I'm sorry, Netflix is missing that that uh, sci-fi. Or I'm sorry, fantasy area. I'm messing up everywhere. That fantasy area, uh-huh. like every one of these streaming big giants, want to have everything covered, and they yeah. don't quite have a good fantasy area right now. So this could be it. Yeah. And speaking of the geeky uh-huh. words, I think what would be good for us to do is go ahead and. Uh, in advance put out our picks for each of us and then okay. have the the our audience can like choose who they want to go with or like or, vote you know, on vote, our picks vote independently too but yeah. you know they can Ooh. see each of there. us are competing like hey you know squeaks is saying you guys should really vote for this and now frank's saying oh this is why i think this would be better 
so people can yeah. read our or opinions. A fantasy football thing too. I like that idea. Yeah. Here, oh, yeah. Like rooting for the person in their votes over. Okay. I think that's something interesting. We'll try something like that out too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the phase zero uh, comicbook.com's Marvel podcast, they do a draft system. So they'll mm-hmm. like draft and then people will like uh, rank or like comment on their polls, whatever it is. Right. Like oh, the like Marvels that. came yeah. out this year. This was like the number two thing Marvel came out with or whatever the list would be. And then people will rank, you know, or like comment on people's individual ones. Like I'm all for it, but that's also a way to like get a lot of hate towards your direction. So <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I'm going to be off the internet yeah. the week my, my poll come out or oh, my man. picks come out. Oh yeah. I had, a, I put out a thing about the Marvel's kind of doing my review for it. I know what hate looks like. Trust me. <laughs> so, oh no, I'm really worried about it. Um, uh, yeah. oh, I should have just made like ghost accounts for that review, but it's fine. Yeah. I, 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 I thought the review was fair. I didn't get any high marks or low marks really. <laughs> Squeaks, yeah, you have finally discovered, you know, the Venom storyline. Have you beaten Spider Man okay. 2? Uh, no, but I'm so, I'm so close though. I, I feel like I'm so close. Am I so close after Scream? Uh, oh, it's getting there. No, you're getting no? there, but you're not close, close. Oh my gosh, this is the problem with BlizzCon, right? Let me, let me so ask I come you right now, and rather play what, my old ass games. <laughs> when you play as Peter Parker, what are you doing for your special attacks right now? Um. Like are I'm you, using my back arms and like spinning okay, forward. Okay, never mind. You answered uh, right there. Okay. okay. No, you still have a lot more to go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Because all I want to <laughs> do right now is just play story. That's all I've been focusing on because That's it's all so you should freaking be doing. good right now. It's so yeah. good. And then on top of that, where my only desire right now is to play Overwatch and World of Warcraft. I'm like, oh, I'm really trying to force this in right now. And you're trying to like be a parent or whatever that is. Oh you know, my like, God. I like, definitely put that last. <laughs> 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 no. Oh man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So hopefully you finish that up next week. I'd love to talk to you about that because uh, okay. I so freaking good. Uh, okay. All right, let's yeah. let's go into our next thing here. Our trailer last year, we've got our first Netflix trailer. Jonathan, I know you and me been waiting for this for oh years. It looks so good. I hope they don't mess anything up. So far, it looks very <laughs> promising. So I we haven't seen any major red flags. They did. It looks like they did a great job with casting and like you know yeah. visual effects yeah. and stuff like that. So I'm just I'm stoked for it. Can't wait. What are your green flags? What are you seeing on this that you're like, yes, that's what I wanted to watch. That the 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 casting really everybody looks like yeah. you know the characters. They didn't do like Straight real show. cheesy yeah. CGI to like you know uh, the the scar on Zuko and on uh, yeah uh, Prince Zuko and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Paul Sung, Sung Hung Lee. Lee. Sung, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm always afraid I'm gonna get the Sung Hung part wrong. I call him yeah. Paul Lee. <laughs> I mean, Frank says it better than me, and I'm Asian, so I'm like, I, you know, he says it perfect. Yeah. Uh, no. I'm so excited for his uncle Iroh. He's such an awesome actor already, and everything yeah, else has been in. So I can't wait. Definitely, at some point, I'm I'm already like letting my beard grow so that I can cosplay him at some point in my life. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I just got to get a, a wig for the you know head hair, but. But yeah, I'm I'm just I'm super excited, and the and Appa and uh, Momo look pretty good too. I was worried that's oh, like, yeah. Ah, yeah. do you change them? Do you make them more like realistic to not be so you know cheesy or something like that? But no, they did a, a decent job. You know, I know it's it's a hard thing to CGI, but it's no, no. uh, it's yeah, definitely doesn't look bad. No, I agree. With you. Thing, I think they did a perfect job of like yeah. finding realism, but also kind of making it like like the anime too. So oh, man, they yeah, they killed it on that. Sorry, would you prefer better quality cgi on on like oppo because i thought like okay it's not the greatest but that's i understand i personally i'd rather them stick to as close as possible to the actual show and it not look great than them trying to make some sort of like realistic version that's like actually just a big yeah. cow or something like that which do you guys prefer definitely what the route that it's going right now i mean we kind of okay. see it with one piece and how wacky things look or maybe and it works out well because it's the fan base right that they're really tailoring this to and I think Oppa looks wonderful how he is. Um, anything that's more realistic, we're just going to be bashing it and how horrible like a flying cow would, you know, yeah, yeah, would look like. I like how flying cow description is just sticking now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking like they take a, like two cows tie them to each other, like, you know, horns to ass yeah. or whatever. And then they just <laughs> drape some sheep's wool over them and call it Oppa and, you the know, cow like, centipede. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. that would be terrible. But do you good. think yeah. we're gonna get to the the water temple, the final water temple of season one within this season, or is that gonna be too much? That to me, I think that's too much to put all in one season. It did good in the in the show because it's a series. You have a ton of you know a bunch of episodes to get through it. 
So it, to me, it's too much to cram all that together. I think the kids should find Aang and then they leave on the adventure to go there. And that'd be the end of the first movie. It's uh, not the first but, movie, John. Clarification. It's a series that Netflix is doing. Oh, that's right. That's it's right. It's about eight episodes, it sounds like. Jeez. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But do we know how long they are? Are they hour, hour and a half episodes? Hour long. It's a drama. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they could yeah. do that. You know, the, I think if you cut each of the anime seasons in half, that's a, that could be a regular season for the live action. That'd be perfect. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because that gives you six mm-hmm. seasons right there. And then there's so much they can do with it. There's other characters they can explore. They can do things differently. Mm-hmm. Man. And from what I saw somebody do like a side by side from the anime to the live action. And there's some shots that are like exact. Yeah. I love that. I think that was just like perfectly done, but there's so much they could do with it. I, yeah. Just, just chop the first anime season half. Per- yeah. I, I would say I wouldn't mind them finishing the first season of the live action with the blue spirit episode. This entire mm-hmm. time you're seeing, you know, Prince Zuko versus Aang. And then this one chance and then we see Zuko save Aang. And then it's like, okay, boom, end of season. So the entire time for people who aren't familiar with it is like, what's going on with Zuko. And then that second season, when he starts to actually like, you start to see twinkles of change. It like all mm-hmm. makes sense now, you know, it's starting to get there. Yeah. I yeah. forgot the blue spirit appeared in, the, in, in season one already. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> that right. totally seems like a season well, yeah. two thing. Uh, yeah. Because uh, there was one shot where it was, um, uh, oh my gosh, what's the name? Uh, with Uncle Iroh <laughs> and his, um, we just said it like, yeah, Zuko. Zuko, yeah. Zuko there uh, is, fighting yeah. back to back with each other. And I'm like, yeah. this doesn't seem like, like they're fighting other nations. It seems like they're trying to, you know, fight for themselves fight really. So nation. like maybe yeah. this is, yeah. Like we're already going to see that flip with this uh, first season. Yeah. Uh, and it, do you see the actual, I forget, I forget what it's called, but the battle with his dad where uh, he talks smack about his own guy. generals. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jalen. And so we see that actually go down and the way it looks like there's flames engulfing Zuko. I'm like, Oh my God, they're going for it. That yeah, looks so yeah. good. So, Man. um, Speaking of like real quick, what looks good is I love how they portrayed how strong the Fire Nation is in this trailer. Yes. Like, oh man, and I I brought it to, up to you before, but just that forest scene where all the trees are burned down and this, uh, yeah. it's a quick shot of someone on the knees. But even at the beginning where the scene, those fire yeah. catapults going over the town. Um, yeah. oh, I just love how they like made him so menacing. Well, Fire and Nation. Earth Nation 2 has that grandeur in them. So like when they get to Bossing Say, and they're opening the gates, which are these huge gates they're opening up. And then you see the gigantic bossing say behind it. It's like, mm. yeah, that's the grandeur that is the like Earth Nation. They're always about being, you know, big and foreboding, but they're somehow slayed by the smaller nation. Like mm-hmm. that is so cool. I'm, I'm excited yeah. to see. Imagine when they get to the Earth Kingdom, what kind of a, like a, a mystery detective drama kind of thing they'll play out with the 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 Dai Li and how they're secretly yeah. being controlled, yeah. and there's, there's all this uh, yeah. like shady stuff going on where they're brainwashing people. And you know, at uh, whatever that Lake Lao guy or something like that, like, he's such that, a good villain. Like, that's all season two stuff. With that's when yeah. Toph comes in. Yeah, as excited I am for this, I'm gonna be double excited for Toph. She is like literally yeah. my gamer tag. Everything I love her so much. <laughs> so, that's gonna be really cool. Anything else we want to see out of Avatar before we move on to the next trailer? No, I'm looking oh. at you, Jonathan. You're the one that knows the most. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The only thing I was going to say is I'm really curious to see how they portray the air bending. Like we kind of understand mm-hmm. how water can look and the fire yeah. can look and maybe how the earth can look, but like the air bending part of it was so cool in the anime, how he would make that air ball underneath him and he would jump on top of it. Mm-hmm. Like all yeah. of that stuff was super cool. But um, I, I'm curious about that. My favorite thing from the trailer though, was when Aang kind of flies down from his staff that mm-hmm. turns into the wings and you uh, kind of yeah. see him dip down and fly out in that trailer. I was like, oh my God, I'm so freaking hyped after that. Yeah. This just looks so good. So we'll yeah. see how they do it. If they change one thing from the original show, I would, I would maybe kind of um, like take it easy on the, the whimsical kind of comedy that Aang, you know, he's so such a playful little kid. And that's, that plays out really good in the, in the cartoon and the anime. But to translate that to live action, it's you got to be careful because it could turn out to be like cheesy or corny or something like that. So, I don't know because yeah. it's almost like the one, one piece, piece, right? Balance is tough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, With like that's piece. what people wanted, and next thing you know, it uh, they did it anyway, and it's getting phenomenal reviews. Yeah, the praise. So it's like maybe you do keep some of it, but he does look very serious in this trailer. So yeah. I mean, yeah. there's limited shots of him, but still, yeah, yeah. You know. 
I was going to say, man, you find that in Naki Godoy, like the guy they cast for Luffy, that one in a million actor who can embody yeah. everything. Yeah. Shit, it could really work. But it, it definitely all hinges on whoever they cast for Aang because he is totally the heart. He's the soul. He's he can do the <laughs> drama. He can do like he cares for his friends, like all of that. He, trying to find that in one person is so hard. But, you know, they did it for one piece. Why can't they do it for this? Jonathan, looking at your reactions, I don't think you were on board as much with Luffy's uh persona in one piece were you with that kind of goofy silly persona <coughs> sorry <clears throat> i didn't grow up watching one piece i didn't know right. I, I didn't have much to go on uh so i i like it i like his character and stuff like that it's just if i i don't think i'd want avatar to be as silly you know in, okay. in the live action yeah. version i think i think one piece uh, the live action one portrays a lot like the avatar anime but translating it i think i think it would just be a little bit too much you know him sliding on a penguin down the, the hill and stuff like that like you know or he could do it but maybe not the yeah he and you know all the it's just a little bit too much <laughs> all right next up we have that ghostbuster trailer this is the sequel to the new era of ghostbusters it looks like they're bringing in the old and the new cast for this one squeaks i know you're a big ghostbuster fan what do you think oh man so i'm a, uh, i really enjoyed the last one um and this one that trailer was pretty sweet what well, one of my favorite things about the trailer is that you get this like huge storm right and they're at that beach but it nothing tells you ghostbusters until all that ice hits that building you're just like oh my gosh yeah. that's the only like fire department new york whatever building i ever want to see in my life <laughs> it's so <laughs> it's so iconic right um but one thing i like to watch this trailer is that we get this massive threat again uh kind of like in the first one with the gozer if i'm saying if it's been a long time since i even said that uh mm -hmm. and and the stay puff uh uh creature so this huge storm comes through and almost is like wiping the city and it's like nice to kind of get that level again with ghostbusters um yeah. so i'm excited for it i think it looks great um paul rudd as a ghostbuster is one of my favorites i think yeah. <laughs> i love him there especially at the end of that trailer i mean if everyone's seen it the way he's just laughing well i get they probably cut it but they show like this villain and then he's just laughing and it, it, it kind of cracks me up. So Paul Rudd knew anything really just makes my makes my tummy giggle. So Absolutely. <laughs> uh, John, do you have a chance to watch that? Yeah, yeah, I think it looks really good. I, I so I'm terrible. I I, I got to say it. Uh, I could blame my son or my wife. I don't know. Some, some, oh, somebody snap. else's prob uh, fault. I didn't see the new one that came out last year. Oh, oh man. Was okay. it even last Deadpool year? Or the one year and two that? and Ghostbusters now. We need to make sure it's yeah, a little binging yeah. day. Um, Pretty far back. So my defense was I was planning on I'm gonna watch that after I watch the old ones again because they were made in the 80s. I wasn't born until the yeah, 90s, yeah. so I didn't remember anything from them. I probably saw them when I was you know real little. Um I remember like the Michelin man. But anyways, so oh. I found I, I think know, I found I know. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely not the Michelin. You oh, yeah, yeah, you were, uh, I just saw the death come over Squeaks' face. <laughs> <laughs> right. Remember, uh, giant thing. One of the guys. Yeah. Um, uh. But yeah, so I got, I think, one and two on DVD at like yeah. a thrift store the other day. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> the other day, like, like six months ago. Uh, so I watched number one again. I haven't watched number two. Still haven't watched the new one. So at some point, I got to get caught up. Though. It is very good. And I think Susan's going to be on board with it. It's not as scary as you might think. I know <laughs> oh she's not a big fan yeah. of horror movies. Yeah. yeah. So I think you'd you be consider this for, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I, I don't think that the afterlife, I don't think that one's as scary as the first two for no. other time. No. Yeah. 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 Her standards for scary are really, really low. Yeah. Are crazy low. <laughs> Some episodes. Like this Pokemon Hallmark commercial is intense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Great. In your, in your defense, John, like my wife's very much the same way. And I tried to put on a new one and you're not, I mean, I'm just as bad as you. Like she didn't finish it or she was kind of getting bored of like the, the new one, mm -hmm. the afterlife. And so I realized I never finished the end either on that yeah. movie. Mm -hmm. So oh. I need to go back and finish the ending of it. But from what I saw, I really dug it. And then I, it seems like they're carrying a lot of those characters over to this one mixed mm -hmm. with the old characters mixed with what you were saying squeaks of like the whole city wide is in threat, not just like yeah. one part of the city or whatever. It's like everywhere is mm -hmm. in danger. We got to step up and join forces. And yeah, man, this looks good. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we need to do a challenge accepted on uh, afterlife before this new one comes out that way. We we all watch it and then we get a good review on it and then we can go watch the new one and we review it after that too. 
Well, thank That's you, sir. Great. I was going to suggest so that. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely doing that. I, I look forward to watching it again. I liked it a lot. Um, I really, especially just as an 80s kid, 90s kid, I especially liked how they treated the Harold Ramis of it all. And mm-hmm. they kind of really gave a good sign off to him. It was a really good ending. I think it's it's yeah. worth the wait. Yeah. We'll check that out for you guys. We're dressing up as Ghostbusters, right? To see this? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> I'll get really Maybe the green guy that eats hot dogs? I got that one down. <laughs> yeah, saying, like, I was just looking <laughs> yeah. as a ghost. That'd be more fun. <laughs> Sad enough, kids would probably think you guys are doing Stranger Things, though, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, freaking right. kids. Oh, I'll do Stranger <laughs> Things. i uh, just put them down. I'll be hot. Uh, <laughs> <Jesus> <laughs> All right, let's head, into some, <laughs> let's head into some reviews. We've got Loki season two, and I think we're split on it. On uh, uh, funny enough, I would say it's one of I said top three earlier. I'll say top five Marvel things ever created. Just to show you where I'm at with this. I know Thomas, where you at? I'm not thinking about the same, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd I'd say I'm in there too. Like it might be at the bottom of the five, but I mean it's yeah, definitely in there. If not for sure, top ten. It's so <sighs> well done when you compare it to everything that happened in season one, everything that's now happened in season two. But then if you go back even farther, there's lines that are pulled literally from Thor one. So yeah. uh, you know, after reading the reign of the mcu book as you know frank i've been going mm-hmm. back and watching all the movies starting with iron man one and i'm kind of now into the thor phase and man if you take that loki into account and when everything he's gone through and everything he's learned and and he's more like thor more like a hero than he's ever been like it really i was really blown away by this i i it was definitely the best marvel thing i watched all weekend or last week yeah Fair <laughs> and we'll get into that one soon too um, yeah god I, I like I mentioned, our challenge accepted review for the Marvels was shorter than any particular episode of Loki, which is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jonathan, you had less less excitement for it. Yeah, it's probably my fault, just like all the other shit I talked about. But No, it's not uh, your fault. It's your opinion. No, it's not your fault. I'm probably more on your, you know, on your side. Because okay. <laughs> a lot of times, since this is a show my wife's definitely not interested in, unfortunately, uh, I try to watch, you know, when I'm at home watching TV, I try to watch something the whole family wants to watch, but... Uh, this is the kind of show that I'll watch on my phone, on my lunch breaks at work, or, you know, the rare chance that I have time to sit at my computer. Uh, yeah. So, the, especially the last few episodes, I watched kind of broken up in like 10 or 15 minutes at a time. Yeah. Uh, so, it just like seemed super unnecessary. Like, they created their own, this big problem, and then they had to fix yeah. this big problem, and then the fix didn't work, so they had to go fix the fix and find another way to do it. And they have time travel, but somehow they can't just go back to the very beginning and, you know, kill someone's mom to fix the problem they they have to like uh it, they just make it so complicated and unnecessarily so to be able to pat themselves back on the back when they you know come together with the solution that they created for the problem they created it's, well, yeah. it's just a mess john did you almost feel like it was a slap in the face because they just went back in time to like even parts of season one where it's like what like was all of this for nothing then did i just waste all this time when the solution was way back right yeah, and it's I don't like know. You, that's kind of like a little vibe I got, but I was like, eh, I don't know, and whatever. With time travel, if you're gonna do this, then you did do this. Like, it, if it's gonna yeah, happen, right. then it already happened. So why, why oh. are we so invested in something that it's? It, I don't know. It's just Man, it's I'm so ready. frustrating. I, there. I, know, I know. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> so just to kind of address that particular thing, because I, you know, like you meet Jonathan, watch a lot of time travel growing up and, and stuff. Yeah. Um, I will say. The key to this whole thing is that it was he who remains his plan from the beginning. Yeah. His gambit, his insurance policy was making Loki eventually kill Sylvie. And he was close to that. I mean, he almost got mm-hmm. his, he almost cashed in on the insurance policy, but Loki says, I'll go with option C and decides I'm going to, I'm going to become the loom instead. And I think that's the thing because while, yeah, if it happened, it already happened. It did. It's just that at the end, somebody more superior than even a mortal, which I think is important going forward, um, decided, no, I don't have to go by your plans. I'm a god. Yeah. On that note, Mm. there is um, this part to it, too, where I think it's called reverse causality, where the future is actually determining the past. And if you look at it from that perspective, he couldn't have got to the future self of Loki until he went through everything he went through, thus then changing the, the past. And he does this because he learns all these different things. He goes through the situation so many times. He It's like Groundhog's Day. Like through all of this, he learns what he needs to do to become better, to become smarter, to actually solve the problem and has to 
from the beginning, I, I'm talking about the beginning of Loki from Thor one, he says, I'm burdened with glorious purpose. And literally yeah. the way he solves this is by having the burden of taking on the job of he who remains and being alone. His purpose. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then in the last episode before that, he was saying, you know, my one thing that I'm most afraid of is being alone and the burden he has to bear is being alone for eternity. Yeah. Like, yeah and that is crazy to me. One thing that helps too is, is I have a feeling the way that it's supposed to be perceived is that he who remains created a closed loop because otherwise it does get a little tricky. If you don't have a closed loop, then then all of a sudden, yeah, Loki can't do these because it didn't do it in the beginning, stuff like that. But if it's closed loop, you're fine. So I have a feeling like that's what the whole prime timeline, why it's a circle, you know, the sacred timeline, I'm sorry, is because it's a closed loop. Basically. Yeah, and and that's it. The What Loki discovers is how to break the loop. And the only way he can break the loop is by replacing the guy who set all these things in motion. And he basically has to do it by sacrificing his own life without dying. He's like, you know, in purgatory. Yeah. Holding these yeah. strands together. Yeah. Like, so that shit is heavy. Sorry. These strands of the timeline, they're managed by this machine, the loom that, that you know, timely builds, but they can be touched by hand. They're physical, tangible strings. You know, that doesn't make sense either. They're like vines to, of, of a tree. And then Loki's able to, he's so powerful that him by himself, one of many gods on Azeroth or wherever he comes. Like Azeroth. Don't As get Asgard. Asgard. I like that, though. <laughs> I like that. Like whatever. I'm not opposed to that. You sure you don't want to go to BlizzCon? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. I've heard you guys talk about it so much, that's why it's in my head. Um, but, you know, he's one of many gods, and yet he is able to control these things and so that all these other gods can continue to live inside these timelines. Like, he's a god more powerful than all the other gods, apparently, because he's saving them all in one in one it did kind of jump right from like a uh, too much like a mischief kind of god to now like the god of gods right yeah um, god of all time and it didn't seem like he really um progressed that way right um, yeah well because they tried to like humble him even they kind of bring him down to like you're watching him through a whole season as pretty much just a normal dude because he doesn't yeah. have his power in the tva yeah and then it's like oh wait a minute now he's got his power back now he's not just a god he's a super god who can control all the timelines can manage holding all the timelines together more than this massive technological you know loom that was doing yeah. it before so he can do more than that just with his god power couldn't sylvie do that Pro- probably and so at some point she could have yeah and yeah, the fact there's all these other variants too kind of makes him less valuable because that well, okay well next movie we're going to see one of the other millions of Lokis and we're going to follow his timeline and he's going to go ahead and hang out with Thor God, and I, I hope so. not I hope but, not <laughs> but the thing and I, I agree with you a lot I think the biggest jump was him figuring out how to time slip but I think they do a really good job of showing how he progresses to uh, like master that ability yeah. but not grabbing the physical strands because who built the time loom it was Victor Timely, a human. Yeah. So yeah. a human figured out how to harness that power. He's he is a god. He's already been alive for fifteen hundred years at this point, and he goes back to centuries to understand advanced physics and how power and time and energy work. So he takes that with the magic that he's always had, that his mom that his mom taught him, with the understanding and the science. Now, mm-hmm. like if Victor Timely, a human, could do it, why couldn't a god? You know what would have actually probably saved this whole thing for me is if he said at one point one small line because he studied for centuries. He studied this brilliant engineering. If he if he said that uh, if he told or Boris or somebody maybe that uh, in my research, I've learned that my power is not magic. It's just science. You don't understand that you guys don't that you guys don't yet understand. That so then it's loop. like, OK, now he unlocked the science behind his own magic. Mm. Now he really knows the complete limits of what he can and can't do. Mm. Oh, that would, that'd I think that would save too. it for me. Yeah. That'd be good too. The other too. thing I want to like toss that. in too is throughout the entire second season, we're seeing him do this time slipping thing and it was always forced upon him. And so then he's talking to Obi and Obi saying like, oh, you have to see the where, what, when, you have to figure out what it is that makes you control these slips. And at the last moment, when everything's about to slip away and he's watching Sylvie, he learns it's the who and that it's focusing on the people you love that keeps you focused enough to be able to control the time slips. And that activates the beginning of God of Stories, which is a tier of his, that's the uppest tier upper upest tier of his um where he could control realities because he's the god of stories it's literally norse mythology and it's in the comics um so i have a feeling that the reason he's able to literally grab and then the other thing that's important too is he's not just grabbing the lines he's activating time in them because they're dead all all of a sudden after the loom blows up so he grabs them and then he 
puts time back to play. So it's thro- uh, flowing again. Mm-hmm. And then he pulls them all together, hooks them to himself. So literally he's the end of time. He is the he who remains still. And, and he's, he's bringing them together because he's focusing on the people he loves that's in them. So he's focusing on Sylvie. He's focusing on Thor, the, you know, his mother and stuff like that. All of them that are in there. Another thing, I believe Asgard's a Nexus place. So I think it's in all, it's only one, but I could be wrong on that. But yeah, so that's kind of part of it too, I think. Yeah, mm. I love that. I, I don't know. I love it. And I, I do agree with you. If you're watching it in chunks and you're just trying to get through it, it's not it's it's not going to benefit you to watch the show in that way. And and that's not your fault. I'm not saying like, oh, you know, you watch your own. Not that's not what I'm saying at all. But it, it is harder because I think this is a lot more of a cerebral show than people probably when you look at Loki, you're like, oh, it's that dude from the Avengers who caused all the problems or brought an alien army and was just like this sarcastic a-hole. But when you actually look at like the deeper threads in this show, it's it. It is a lot deeper. It, it it takes a lot more thought process, I think, to really, you know, grab a hold of everything. Ah, grab a hold. But like, <laughs> for real, you know, and, you know, I, I had to listen to countless other shows like Challenge Accepted uh, to really understand all of the diff- deeper themes and everything like that. But man, it, it just it loops back on itself so much. And yet at the same time, we're seeing somebody grow. And I always find it fascinating in places where time doesn't exist that somebody can still learn, they can still evolve, they can still mature, and and he's leveling up, you know, in in, in this time loop, you know, it's it's I guess a long stretched out Star Trek episode in that sense. Oh my god, you fucking give me to it, man. So I was, I, was <laughs> yeah. I Sorry, literally man. had to treat this because uh, Frank got me to kind of like watch this again over yeah. like his uh, description of it all um or thoughts of it all uh but i had to almost treat this like yeah like a big uh next generation episode mm-hmm. um comp- instead how- of a marvel thing where <laughs> instead of a marvel thing where my frustration was like loki's not lucky anymore like i yeah i know there's variants of stuff but this is totally just not him but it did turn me on not gonna lie when he was walking mm-hmm. out there and he's getting his full-on outfit on i was like that's what i'm talking about that's what i've been wanting to see horns, yeah. <laughs> right yeah <laughs> so uh, movie- let me write those things Moving forward, <laughs> there's there's gonna be endless variants, right? Like he he's the loom now. He's making sure everything can flow the way it needs to, so the the branches will just yeah. keep growing, right? But we don't know which um, if we're ever gonna see any of those variants because right now the branches are growing, and mm. the TVA's sole job is to make sure that they don't collide and they yeah. don't. They're just they're just ushering them, literally like how you would grow a plant in your backyard. You know, you don't want yeah. things to get all intertangled or for it to grow sideways or into yeah. a different plant. Their, their job is just to in like, their timeline. Yeah. yeah just or, usher it. You also don't want pests in the garden. And so they're hunting down Kang the whole time now too. Yeah. Yeah. And he tries nice. to jump from one, nice. one branch to another. I did like somewhere. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, overall, like the episode I think was great. Uh, even like me just pushing myself to watch this whole series, but I think it was good. I don't know if it was like top five or for making movies and stuff. I know you yeah. guys were saying that, but um, I mean, I, I, I I almost want to hate myself for saying like, yeah, I kind of enjoyed it because of how no, much I was passing on it. <laughs> across across but, uh, the Spider-Verse, me and Thomas were both that way. We're like, I feel guilty not liking this as much as everybody else seems to be liking oh, it right man. now. Oh man, that's the, the second, second, second one. one. See, second I'm not one, a big fan yeah. of the second one either. So that's yeah, really so, Oh, good. The, man, we all are, I, yeah, I guess. Talk okay. about internet hate. Like I was like, listen, I'm just going to be fair about this. I think the animation is beautiful. I love it. Yada, yada. And people yeah. were like, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're no. talking about. Like, oh, oh my God. Right? God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was not <laughs> but, that great at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think uh, what like we're talking about, like all these uh, more variants, I think it's uh, also a way just to let us know that there's all these uh, worlds out there, multiverses. Uh, but still, I think we're going to tone it down soon, right? With Secret uh, Secret Wars, right? Secret Wars will do that for sure. So, yeah. you know, I think it's a way to like introduce something if they need to, but we still got to slow it down a little bit because after recently watching the end of Ant-Man and seeing all those kings and now you got all this like mm-hmm. uh, Loki stuff, I was like, guys, come on, man. Let's let's scale it back a little bit. Okay. How much does Marvel wish they had that one scene back? That oh one scene gosh. really messes up some oh, shit. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. crazy. Although it does make the part in the probability feel a lot better. You know where he's running and, and Scott Lang's dividing into like a million of himself and everything? Yeah. When you watch that scene now, it kind of makes a lot more sense. And it actually, like the way they kind of fall apart matches the way they look in Loki and so, like, when you start going into, like, too many variant fields or whatever, you start spaghettifying. I, I feel like it makes that one scene better. They did screw themselves at the end, but that's yeah. a different problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so yeah. nasty. 
Um, all right, let's move on to Marvels because we're running long in the tooth already. I knew this was going to happen. We have so much cool stuff to talk about. The Marvels. <laughs> Thomas, you had a chance to watch it. I watched it. And I don't think either of you guys wasted your money, correct? Correct. No? I, and well, I, I might I, still I feel see like I wasted too, my money. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy with the money I spent. I will say, I will say oh, on man. the positives, my general vibe of this whole thing is it's a fun one-off story. It is technically connected to everything else, but it doesn't super feel like that. Mm-hmm. feels like, you know, just almost a summer flick. You go in, fireworks come out, and then you can go to grocery shop, and you don't have to, like, worry about thinking about it too much. Unlike Loki, which I sit there, like, do loops yeah. in my head about it. Um, so it is fun that way. Really cool action scenes. And the chemistry between the three main uh, lead actresses in this thing, top notch. I think that's a, a yeah, highlight sir. in my opinion. I heard that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. They are. They're great together. They they seem like they're having the most fun, and that's kind of what you want in a movie that's supposed to be fun. It was a little too funny for me at parts, or like trying to be too funny. The comedy yeah. in land, but them together was awesome. I'm like, just do more of that, like the yeah. whole movie. But then you don't. You get <laughs> other side things, and you're like, what is this crap? But I enjoyed when they were all together on screen. I thought that was yeah. a, was awesome. By the way, it's in the description already. But yeah, spoiler warning for everything. Um, the villain, I think, was pretty lacking. You know, I wasn't uh, a threat, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know if physically was, but, you know, I feel like Iron Man with a good punch could have taken her out, too. It wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> no. Okay, so I kind of, since you both watched it, I gathered yeah. some information because I wanted to ask for your opinions, your honest yep. opinions. Yep. So this might be spoilers, but whatever. Like, put the warning we up, the, right? Yeah, we're good. We got the warning. So, uh, with the information I gathered, okay. <laughs> did, how did acting feel with the three right okay did it seem like we know brie larson will kind of know we get rumors that brie larson doesn't want to be captain marvel anymore so did kamala khan was the only one that showed up or how do you guys think of monica as well monica did quite well um but okay. amon Vellani, who plays kamala khan is the future of the mcu she's so bright and fun she has mm-hmm. that very much spider-man vibe i know what you mean by that squeaks like you know you know what i'm saying where it's like fun and whimsical yeah personality. Yeah. That is, I love. I love that. She's that. And I think Monica did a really good job too. Paris, I can't remember her first name. Tanoya Paris. Thank mm-hmm. you, Tanoya Paris. Uh, yeah. She did a really good job of that kind of like stern, kick ass, Scarlett Johansson like character. Okay. And so I really think we got something good there. You know, Hawkeye kind of personality. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Brie Larson uh, did Showing. the Brie Larson thing. <laughs> so yeah. it was kind of rough. With the Brie Larson thing, right? Do we feel like, uh, okay, did you feel like in this movie? that they just don't know what the fuck to do with Captain Marvel. Like, as in, so I'm getting tons of, like, she's serious at some point. She's kind of funny here. She's kind of cocky here. Do we just not, maybe this is the reason why Brie Larson doesn't want to do it anymore. Do we feel like a direction for this hero is just not there? Are we trying to do the same shit where Thor is this freaking god and now he's an idiot and whatever? Like, what do we, <laughs> like, does that seem lost at all when you're watching this movie? My take is this. Like, I, she seems like an awesome person in real life. <laughs> and uh, I've tried to go into every project that I've seen Brie Larson in, and I'm like, I'm going to dig it. My wife's watching this thing right now called Lessons of Chemistry, and I actually like that show. Mm. But I personally am not a fan of her acting, and I don't know if she was the best choice. Tenoya Paris as Monica Rambeau, amazing. Uh, Iman Vellani as Miss Marvel, amazing. But like, mm. I don't know if Brie Larson, for me personally, was the right choice. I feel like she's very flat. I never feel like whatever she says is very convincing. Even when she's crying, I don't feel sad for her. And like, yeah. you know, but I think the rest of the women in this project are amazing. I even made this comparison before. I'm like, man, if this, if the MCU was set 10 years earlier and you had a Charlie Theron or a Florence Pugh type actor take this role, they could have done way more with it. And I don't know if it's, and you know, at first you can blame the first movie. Like they didn't know how to write her. So she didn't know how to, she didn't act very well. But now she's had multiple times to do this role. I just don't think she was the right choice. I don't know if she's the right casting. And for me, it's maybe one of the only misses in the MCU as far as casting goes. Because otherwise, this is the last since 20, uh, 2008. All of the acting that or actors that they've cast have been spot on. For me, mm-hmm. I feel like she's a miss. Okay. That's a good call. Uh, speaking of the characters, though, uh, you brought up Monica multiple times now. Does she feel like she was just thrown in this movie? Because honestly, she's only was in WandaVision. And from my understanding, WandaVision is not mentioned at all in this series. Same so thing the only Marvel, thing you though. got, yeah. but the only thing you got was her as a little girl in Miss Marvel. Yeah. So did it, did it just seem like Monica is thrown in this, in this 
you know, whatever. Well, well, Kamala Khan also only was in Miss Marvel, the Disney Plus series. So two of the characters were only in Disney Plus series. And if you didn't watch those, then you're in trouble. And I think Plus, that's part of the old guard of yeah. Marvel in that, like, I think future Marvel, we've been seeing all this. We've been talking about it, all the changes going on in the studio right now, where like, you know, you have to watch everything right now. And unfortunately, that's not good. Or that won't be the case going forward, which is good. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but yes, I think it does feel like both those characters are thrown at you too fast if you didn't watch the Disney Plus series. Well, what about the explanation of powers then? Okay, so if you did watch Miss Marvel, right, we're seeing her from the first episode uh, grasping her abilities. But Monica, yeah. though, we got her pretty much towards the end of WandaVision and haven't seen anything more. So is she some yeah. like kick-ass character right off the start? No, or... she's learning her abilities in the movie. Even okay. flying, like they kind of like do a joke okay. about like, you got to try or else the girl's going to die. And so she does try to fly like everything. Like, like yeah, if you don't okay. save her, she's not going to graduate high school. So get up there. Yeah. Kind of thing. And yeah. She's, okay. she's not a, I like it because she's not a master right off the bat either. You know, like some movies yeah. is like they discover their powers in the next movie. They're like, how are they so badass? Out of something? Yeah. We never saw this progression. Like there's a progression for her in the movie and it works. I do feel like she's kind of third fiddle in a way, but I yeah. like her and, and her character more than I've ever liked Captain Marvel. I'll say like I I think Tanoa Paris kills it. She she seems smart. She seems badass. She actually seems like she can fight. She you know like her powers seem cool. Like I'm so excited to see where she goes. Like you know unfortunately like if Brie Larson was like I don't want to come back anymore, I'd be like all right whatever. As if as long as we had Monica Rambo, I'd be cool with it. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Okay. Yeah, and and the fact that she has this tie to her mother, which I think is a cooler more deep character point than it is for Monica or for uh, Carol Danvers. Who's just kind of like, yeah, I was a fighter pilot. Like she doesn't have that kind of connection to somebody else that makes her motivated, you know, not in the same way that I think we no, see with Monica. Yeah. 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 Um, I have two more questions for you guys. Actually. Yep. What's, what's, what's up with Nick Fury? Is he this comedic relief <laughs> now? Is he just this weak person no, that you feel you know like? What? Nick Fury what is, is back to being Nick Fury. Don't watch really? Secret invasion and you're fine. Okay, yeah, Secret okay. Invasion throws that character off so much tonally. It's mm -hmm. a roller coaster if you if you could include that one. But other than that, this feels like the Nick Fury that we saw at the end of um really end game, whatever, where he's kind of like, I'm working on Saber right now. And that's what he's doing. Is he a little bit of a joke? Is he is he a little bit of a comedy character right now? Yes, he is, but he's mm -hmm. still a badass. Unfortunately, the story what he was in was ridiculous. So that doesn't help because it, it has to do with um goose the cat so it's kind of just whatever but yeah mm, okay yeah in my thing so i'll go ahead you know, i was just gonna say that yeah that's such a good point i think the story he is in this movie is like does nothing for his character if you did watch secret invasion you're gonna get whiplash because yeah. he's a completely different person yeah. in this it's kind of like how i felt about like thor from you know maybe i guess you could say from like infinity war to thor love and thunder it's like whoa who, this is two different characters for me but um, mm -hmm. yeah, he. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he does have moments of being badass. I will say that. But he was um, honestly one of the downsides for me with this movie. But yeah, other okay. than I mean, uh, his story, I should say, not necessarily his acting, not necessarily even his jokes, but like the path he was on was kind of a letdown, I would say, in the overall movie. But other than that, um, yeah, if you skip Secret Invasion, congratulations. You're going to like this, yeah. Nick Fury. <laughs> I, I, I got I'm going to throw it out there right now. The entire that whole B plot was straight up stupid and could be cut and would you would not actually lose a damn thing it was okay. very much a waste of time yeah, yeah in already a short movie yeah I was, I was just gonna say that actually a waste of time in a, in a short movie um so one last thing that's it, it. i want to hear the spoilers okay <laughs> i think this movie's projected to not do very well in the box office so yes. what was <laughs> leaked out um was a bunch of x-men stuff okay and i feel like while well, some are saying it's just the poll in Maybe it was just little secret things that people could catch their eye with watching the, some commercial, you know, trailers. But it could be to try to bring people in. Now, how much X-Men did we get? I want to know it all. Put the spoiler warning out there. Tom, what's that to you, buddy? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what we got was the best thing that might happen all year for me. And at the same time, still not enough. Like, it, <laughs> it was I loved how they did it, actually. Mm -hmm. Um I was so caught off guard. I did not expect anything X-Men from a Marvel's like the Marvel's yeah. movie. Like it, it almost on paper doesn't make sense. And yet at the same time, it works. Well, they were they, heavily on that with Miss Marvel, the series, right? It wasn't towards the end and X-Men popped out of it. Yeah, uh, yeah they said the yeah. one line, but this is actually okay. like 
Yeah, uh, this like, is the, yeah there's okay. the undenying like this is the X Men, and okay. uh, it ties from uh, Monica Rambeau. We see her mom, who's now binary. Binary was connected to the X Men in the comics, right? And but, yeah, and just to throw Monica's in a different dimension. That's important to remember for going forward in the yes. MCU. Okay, go ahead. Hundred percent. Thank you for that. Yeah, and yeah. So okay. she's basically to save the world. She has to kind of go to this other dimension and kind of get stuck there. Wakes up, sees her mom. It's not her mom. It's another character, Binary, who, mm. if you know about the X Men, has ties to Rogue. And then from there, you know, you hear a very familiar voice from the original X Men movies, and in walks a uh, what I thought a very beautiful blue man. Uh, yeah, that's what the who, fuck I'm talking about. And the reason that I said is, that, I don't want any that that cheap ass shit where they're like, oh, we don't want to do makeup, or we don't want to be in makeup the whole scene. That motherfucking yeah. beast better be blue every fucking minute on screen. Yes, oh, and oh, it's God. it's a beast that you see before. That's not Nicholas Holt, but like the original Kelsey Grammer. It's his voice. It's the smart beast. Yeah. Um, maybe the special effects could have been a little bit better. I will say, but I, I was so honestly, stoked. I think the special effects were the best, dude. It's but it's motion cap instead of costume. I want to warn you about that in case you're right. But no, I think fair. it looks spectacular. And he had like a folder open, like with his glasses on, with a lab like, coat. Oh yeah. God, yes. yeah, lab coat. He drops like Professor X's name in there. He oh, drops man. in an explanation for why she's in that universe. Uh, and you, it's just like, holy shit. Okay, you gave me X-Men. You also gave me how Spectrum might come into play in Secret Wars. Yeah. You know, who? Oh, God, it was just so much to process. And I will literally buy another ticket to just watch that two minutes of screen time. Yeah. Gu- guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. I'll sit through that whole damn movie to watch you that. You literally again. have the outside door of Cerebro, the Metal X, and everything like that. And yeah. when he says Charles in that in that classic Beast voice, you're like, yes, baby, that's what I'm looking oh, for. It is everything you wanted out of it, and okay. it's just so short. And it's like, yeah, that's the price of admission right there. How much? Uh, yeah, how much yeah. X do we get in the actual movie? Like any hints or anything like shown no, in the it. background? No X, no nothing. That was it. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And then we also have a, a so they actually moved post credit scene. So the, there's another post credit scene that was actually done at the end of the movie, not necessarily in the credits. And it shows that uh, Mon Valani's Kamala Khan is now she goes to um, Kate Bishop and says, "Hey, let's start a team uh, version of the Avengers, basically." And uh, and she's even like, "You know, Ant Man's got a daughter, so she's creating Young <laughs> Avengers now." Yeah, she mm. becomes like Nick Fury, but like not in a in a it's her so way, funny. not in yeah. a Nick Fury way, but just kind of funny. But you're like, damn, they just dropped the Young Avengers. They're like that tease is there, and then next thing you know, it's like boom, X Men. So yeah, it was you really almost like forget that yeah. happens because the yeah. X Men thing is so big and Beast is so big in it. But like even that was cool because she's like, we need to form a team together, and it makes sense. It's not like one of those Morbius we need to form a team kind of things. Yeah, like this one actually is legit. And uh, even that's pretty exciting too. So everybody's okay. enemies cool except for Captain Marvel's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least from my personal view. I know? agree with that. I was going to ask yeah. about Young Avengers too if they had like set that up because it seems like they have several young characters that they're kind of getting ready. For. Like you know, uh, Spider Man now is in a good position where he can like lead the Young Avengers. He's kind of he's and the older would, if range. If anything, Miles Morales will probably do it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's uh, that one that girl from Doctor Strange too was really a cool character. Uh, by played by America Chavez. I don't remember. Her character oh yeah, 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 yeah. That could open no, that's, dimensions. I think that's it, isn't it? Is it America Chavez? Is yeah, the name of the character? Chavez, oh, yeah. is the character. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I, yeah. I thought that was the actress. They were real right. creative with that one. Yeah, yeah I yeah. forgot about her. She could probably join the team. Um, yeah. she addresses Kate Bishop. She addresses Scott Lang's yeah. daughter. She she has powers. So you know, like at least three of them are there. We've already seen Wicked and Speed, and uh, we've yeah. talked about this all at Chavez. Yeah. Except Black Widow's kid. Or Black yeah. Lives, I'm sorry. Scarlet, uh, Scarlet uh, Witch's Scarlet kids. Witches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Scarlet Witch's kids. Um, we saw Scar. I think he'll take the place for Hulkling. And then Hulk we Sun, also yeah. have um, the Patriot from Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. We got to see uh, the guy who kind of followed Steve Rogers and then got arrested at Korean War, um, who was in Baltimore. We see that his grandson, you know, he becomes Patriot, part of Young Avengers. So the characters are out there. And it's sick to know that somebody is in the universe now assembling them together. Yes. And that's Miss Marvel. And so, again, yeah. as such a big Kamala Khan fan, the fact that it's like her trying to pull the Nick Fury, but also like, um, oh my God, it's so cool to see you kind of yeah, vibe. Yeah. It's so yeah, fun. Yeah. Like, yeah. she's like, I got an idea. It's like almost like, hey, I'm. It's, it's exactly the Iron Man scene at the end of Iron Man. Like, I want to tell you about the Avengers. But she's also like, what's your Instagram handle? Like, she's, yeah. you know. Yeah, but like a kid who's excited telling you, like, want to join yeah. my team? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Cool. Um, 
No, um, actually, okay, one last thing. Sorry, sorry. This thing just no. kind of popped up in my head. Uh, please explain. This sounds like some, I always say his name wrong, uh, Taekwon Wakiti shit. There's yeah, a scene in YTT. YTT. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, no matter what, I always say that name wrong. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck's up with the singing planet that I'm hearing about? That you have? Like, is this next, some shit, what's, the, like, what's the next topic? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> why? Why? It seems so like, stop trying to make these superhero movies sometimes jokey, you know? Like, yeah. the world's in yeah. peril and like, we need heroes to help it out. It's in case you need a bathroom break, and then you know where it's at. As soon as you see all the start to sing, you're like, okay, right. Yeah, like Love and Thunder, where literally they're fighting. Kids have fucking Thor's power, and they're fighting. Just so ridiculous. And yeah. is that kind of like that? What <laughs> level on ridiculous is this? this I, I love that movie. I hate that everybody else hates it, because I love that movie so much. Oh, my God. Yeah. So much. <laughs> but... So I I hated the singing part. Like it just didn't yeah. work for me. I thought it was yeah. so goofy and weird or whatever. Two things. It had comic oh, yeah. basis. So like they they have this in the comics. So like there's a a literally like a a template for them that they kind of took this from. But two, after the movie's done, I went with my parents and I was like, oh, you know, how'd you think? Of, like, what'd you think about it, mom? And she's like, oh, I loved it. I was like, what'd you think about the singing part? She's like, oh, I loved that part. It was so yeah. great. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. So this part wasn't for me. Like it's yeah, from my mom fair. or maybe my wife who likes musicals like that. That's for them. Oh, I guess it okay. wasn't for me, you know, okay. and, and that's kind of what I'm going to have to chalk it up to. Cause it, yeah, I like it. Got it. Got it. I just <laughs> had to ask about it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Um, we're going to be talking about invincible. We'll do that next week. Cause we need to watch a little bit more of it anyway. So, and we're a bit long in the tooth. So we're going to talk about invincible next week, but let us know what you guys are thinking about invincible so far. Episode one and two are out now of season two. Um, and already it's looking really good. But let's get into new comic book suggestions uh, for the week. We have Detective, I'm sorry, Detective Comics 1077. This is a new story arc that started last uh, two weeks ago. Totally worth uh, reading along with that. Uh, Batman and Robin number three. This is still a relatively new run. This is with Damian Wayne's uh, Robin, so check that out. Uh, we have Spawn 347. Every Spawn's worth a read. I don't even need to tell you why. Uh, Blade oh, number right. five. Uh, the reason I'm suggesting Blade number five is because Marvel was going to make Blade all about it, the movie, all about his daughter. They changed directions. And since that direction changed, they've been coming out with this new run of Blade. So this Blade will be probably leading into the story of the movie. So check that out as well. And then we have Superior Spider-Man number one. Superior Spider-Man, it's old school classic, and it's good to see it back. Um, and then I don't remember which one it is. It's not, I don't actually have it up here right now. and I'm, I lost it. But they all they are also introducing the new um oh it's in Ultimates. They're introducing the new mm. Green Goblin, which looks incredible in his new suit. Looks mm. super good. So check that out as well. That's it. Okay, let's go into recommendations. Jolly, what recommendation do you have for the week, man? Um, uh, that is a great question. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, so I just started playing Overwatch 2. I haven't played Overwatch in so long. I don't think I ever played Overwatch 2 yet, so this is mm -hmm. this is uh new territory. Though it feels exactly like one, I don't see what's changed at all. So I don't know. Uh but yeah, if you guys haven't played it, go play it. I'm gonna keep trying to, you know, plug at it whenever I have time so I can actually win a match and not just die the whole time. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, Squeaks will help you with that problem. Right. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> guys. We're gonna try to replace Team Portugal because we think we could do it already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just with three of us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Squeaks, what do you got? Recommendations for the week? Oh man, oh my goodness. Oh um, shit! If you don't have one, that's fine. No, I really. <laughs> and I, I don't. I've been watching the old stuff. I've been okay. That's fine. I've been. I went back. Okay, I had. I have to say this though because you got me on Loki. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna finish Miss Marvel. TV series, so I'm already okay. on episode three, and I don't. I'm just sitting I'm there, sorry. kind of just like going through it, you know. <laughs> yeah. I was like, screw yeah. it. I mean, I feel like you're, you're just kind of like when you're deep into something, you just keep going, kind of like how I somehow finished Walking Dead and watching the side stories now for it. So I'm kind of like there. Just, yeah. just the middle is bad. Like the beginning and the end are awesome. It's that middle yeah. part that's a little tough. But hey, you're okay. you're right in the middle, man. Just power through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep it going. <laughs> Background noise. Yeah, that ending is yeah. really good. Uh, Thomas, what do you got for us this week? Yeah, so I got something. Oh, man, I'm loving this. Uh, I think this is the thing that I'm most excited to watch right when we're done recording. But it is uh, kind of an anime. But you guys may know the voice. Like Her name is Maya Eskridge. She was in Pen15. But it's called um, Blue Eye Samurai. And mm -hmm. it is insane. I, I'm blown away by how good it is right now. 
The animation is incredible. <laughs> um, it feels like they took some of that across the Spider Verse animation and moved it into this, but with a really compelling story. And uh, yeah, oh God, is is phenomenal from what I've seen. But I'm only on like episode three, but I'm I'm blown away by it. What is this uh, on? Is this the Netflix thing or? or? Yeah, yeah, it's on okay. Netflix. Like Netflix, like out of nowhere, dropped like three fire anime. It was like uh, Blue Eye Samurai, Pluto, and like one other thing, and. I I started with this and I'm like I got to finish this. This is so good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's sick. The fighting, the 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 style, the all that stuff is really really cool. So, yeah, I would check that out. Mm. Um I've got two for you. First off, if you haven't watched Gen V, we haven't been able to review it on Geek Freaks just because what a tough couple of weeks we've had with BlizzCon and stuff like that, but Gen V is ex- exactly as good as the boys, I would say. It really surprised me how much they landed that ending and uh, that was super good. My other thing is on November 17th is Please Don't Destroy. If you guys are familiar with that comedy group, they work for SNL now. Uh, they have a new movie coming out called The Treasure of Foggy Mountain. Fantastic casting in this thing. It's a lot of um, favor casting. Like, oh, Conan O'Brien's going to be one of their dads just because it's basically a favor for somebody. Uh, so that's coming out on Peacock. And that's Please Don't Destroy The Treasure of Foggy Mountain. Really talented, guys. I really like that a lot. That trailer's that funny, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I love all their skits. They're by far the highlight of SNL at this point. Um, and then I want to give a quick thank you to Jonathan, who hosted a birthday shindig for me where we did Taskmaster. Okay. And that was, I was surprised beyond belief how good that turned out. I was really happy with that. That was just good. And it was just good to bullshit with Squeaks and Joe and everybody like that. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I appreciate that. It was thanks. fun. I feel bad. I should have planned it as a surprise party. would have been more fun. And if I could have got people together to pre-record some of the challenges, would have been even better. But still, it was a good time. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so I, you, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I think it's, I think it was a different kind of fun is the fact that you did have your wife do all the challenges that they were yeah. supposed to do. And so we just watched her do challenges being tortured, carrying yeah. buckets of yeah. water with her teeth. While we was like, yeah, right. oh, nobody else has to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can definitely tell with those videos that she was dragged to do it. She almost <laughs> looks like fucking John put me up to this I shit. I did not though. I, I at first actually didn't even offer it. I didn't even think about it. I was just like, okay, I got to find, you know, a couple other people that want to do it. Squeaks uh-huh. is going to do it. Diana, you know. And then uh, she's like, well, I can do it. I was like, okay. oh, yeah, do you want to be in it? I'm sorry. I didn't. <laughs> but then, uh, it, yeah, I think she had a lot of fun with it. She was kind of excited about it once we watched a couple episodes together and stuff. Oh, that's and what I was wondering I, is if she watched any of the episodes with you. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. And I told her, like, I, I can't give you any hints. Once you read the thing and your time starts, you know, yeah. that's it. And I told her in advance, so, like, I'm playing Alex. So if you need help, I can do what you want me to do. But it, if I'm slow, I'm slow. Or, you know, if I don't do it the way you yeah. want, then, you know. You have to be very specific and stuff like that. But then you I, literally, uh, I just, you, I had to, you literally got at me thinking like, how can I? So maybe this is my recommended recommendation for the week. Is yeah. the uh, Great British Bake uh, Bake Off? Bake Off, yeah. yeah, yeah. So my wife loves to watch that show, and then sometimes that's, I get distracted by it. So I was yeah. thinking about John when he did Taskmaster. I was like, how do I set up a tent and a table outside and do that for her as a surprise? That, <laughs> that is like pretty cheap. fun. When's her birthday? Know. She doesn't listen to Geek Freaks. When's her birthday? Uh, May second. <laughs> God, try to we got plenty of time, of, dude. That's yeah, a good to idea. figure that out. To yeah, that out. Let you easy bake ovens and then go to town. Yeah, yeah, I need you all to be there, and I'm gonna that's, be the judge. You know, that's the hard thing. Oh, stuff. Each of those. Is we can get those little camp stoves. Exactly. Let's do little camp stoves. Yeah, we can. Do, we can do something. Yeah, we can. Do yeah. Something. Oh man. Yeah. And make it easy. <laughs> make it like, like the camp stoves. Like do pancakes or some random. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, this is a great idea. Loving this. I'm thinking. Oh, because John. Yeah. yeah. One thing right, that's guys. funny is after after she did all the challenges, uh, because she's like carrying a bucket with her teeth, right? She was like, wait a minute. Because I told her, like, remember, I can I can help you with some of this stuff. She's like, wait, so I could have told you to like put the hold the bucket up to my mouth so I could put it in my teeth or something like that, or I could have told you like bring the bucket over here. Like, yeah. yeah, you could have done all that stuff. She's like, God damn it, why did you tell me that? And so, <laughs> yeah, all right. Don't want to give you an advantage. <laughs> When you watch the show, you start to kind of realize the lateral thinking and how much you could actually play with that. It changes yeah. things a lot for you. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, that's it for us this week. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.